It is 5.46 in the morning, and I'm feeling pretty perky. How are you? I'm sick. <laughs> and I woke up at 4.30 this morning, and that was a little less perky, but um, I got a shower and everything, and I'm good now. And we are headed to the airport. And our, you know what time our flight is? 8.50. 8.50. So, like, to get off flight at 8.50, we have to leave our house at, like, 5.45 which seems a little ridiculous. Why is the airport so far away? Anyways, so we are going to Fukuoka, which is in Kyushu, which is like the southern part of the main chain of islands in Japan. And the reason that we decided to go to Fukuoka was because right now there's a typhoon that's coming to Japan. And I didn't check the weather last night, but it was supposed to be in Fukuoka yesterday. So it's moving its way north. And we were like, okay, it's gonna be in Tokyo this weekend. And this weekend is a three-day weekend, so where can we go where there will be no typhoon? So we thought Fukuoka, so here we go. <laughs> I guess the whole logic here. Okay, if Fukuoka is south and Tokyo is north and the typhoon is going it goes north. from those one place to the other and our plane Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that, that's the part I that's the part I forgot. Like I didn't know I didn't think about that very well when we planned this. Like, how's the plane gonna make it? But well, we checked the schedule, it seems like it's gonna be okay. The plane will be above the typhoon? I don't know. Yeah. How does this work? We need, a, work? we need a scientist. Yeah, we need a scientist. So, we're gonna hit the train and then we're gonna be in Fukuoka in a few hours. What are you, uh, what are you doing? I'm marking down everything in the world that could ever be interesting in any small spot of Fukuoka. And then we will go to all of them. So can you explain your process a bit? I look at all the pictures and I pick the pictures that I like the best and then I put a little post-it on that page. And food goes on the top and activities go on the side. And then when I'm on the airplane I'm going to find all the things on the map. So that if you just end up in an area, you can go, oh, oh, we're only like five minutes away from this. Let's just go. And it works out pretty well. I've got something pretty common. You can get all of these things in convenience stores. And it's like a um, onigiri, like a Japanese rice ball, but a long one. And this oh. one is funny because it is called uh, Shi Chicken Mail. This is like, I think this one is a sea, like chicken of the sea. Like, and it's tuna. And I'm going to attempt to open this thing properly for I you. I can't wait. So, uh, let's see here. So it says here that you pull here. This is like, uh, the packaging on this is incredible. So you pull on this, and that opens. And they have got it set up so that you, the, um, the seaweed isn't already touching the, the rice because then it would be soggy. So then you get this, and the seaweed is inside of this little bag. That's the seaweed sleeve. The seaweed sleeve. Okay, so then you open this up, and then, so now it's two pieces. <laughs> and then you open this up like this. And now you can see that the rice is not touching the seaweed. It's on At this little all. piece of plastic. So then you touch this to this, and then you roll it around, and now the seaweed comes out of the other side. And it's like instant glue almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. the and rice to the seaweed like is so it's really stuck to it. Yeah. So now you have a uh, fresh piece of seaweed and chicken of the sea, tuna, tuna, tuna roll. So it's basically like tuna, tuna mayonnaise like mixture. So like it's like what you'd expect from like a tuna sandwich or something in the states, I guess a bit. But inside of seaweed and rice, it's actually pretty good. The airport has recently added a third terminal, but they haven't really added, like, convenience to it. The train doesn't go there, so we have to stop at terminal number two to get to terminal number three. And it's about a little under a kilometer of a walk. We've decided to walk. They do have buses that go there, but it takes the same amount of time as if you walked. And 
with the walk. It's kind of cool to see these amazing little like turnoffs so that people can speed past other people. We haven't sped past anyone yet, but we probably will. I'm seeing the people in front of us are passing us. We're going to be passing them. Um, we hear that terminal number three is minimalistic, and I don't even know what to expect out of that word from a terminal. So I'm kind of excited to see this new terminal here. There's no chairs. Yeah, everyone <laughs> is standing, ro or robots are carrying, no. It's minimalist like the, is not like robots. That, it's, like that, it's like that airport in India. <laughs> that was minimalistic. No telephones. No telephones, no, <laughs> no ATMs. Okay, let's go. You want to race? We are in Fukuoka and the semi, semis, semis, they're like cicada type things. They're here and they're noisy. So I'm sorry if that's noisy in your speakers. Anyway, um, the weather here is amazing. Uh, so sometimes like after typhoons, there's like beautiful weather. And I think the typhoon, like I said, came through here yesterday. So there's like no humidity and it's like pretty cool, but not cold. It's awesome. Uh, and we are on our way. We came into the center of the city into an area called Tenjin and we are going to a restaurant that we're going to check out and at the airport we bought these um day scratchers passes. he got scratchers yeah it's like a scratcher right <laughs> um and it is a day pass for the transportation for the, for the subway the buses and um some of the train lines and like he scratches off the month and the day that you're going to use it and that's how he tells it's like you know been used so we can't use it tomorrow unless we figure out how to recover this area then then we could be then we could be using these forever but i don't think we're gonna figure that out but the thing that it's funny about this is like it's gonna save us some money um instead of just like buying a ticket for every everywhere we go but i'm fairly certain these are only for foreign tourists and like when i read about these on the internet they said you had to show your passport but katie went up to the booth and like like acted all like you know like you know an american like derpy like i don't understand japan <laughs> and he just was like okay you can have them he didn't check our passports so if you check their passports, which we don't even have with us, he would have seen we don't have tourist visas, and I don't think we'd be allowed to be, buy these. I think we kind of went around the rules, but mostly just because he was like just kind to us, I guess. So. I, I also think he never asked for it, so I don't feel yeah, he bad. Didn't, he didn't ask. He didn't ask at all for the passports. So uh, she's got her map. Oh, I've got my map, and I spent time on the plane <laughs> getting it organized, and. I will be honest, I am impressed with myself because we're hitting the ground running and I just like munched into this on the plane and I know where we're going that we can get an amazing Fukuoka meal and we're good to go. We're, we're ready to go. It makes me really, really happy. So let's, let's get there. <laughs> This restaurant is pretty neat. Uh, everything is like bar stool, so you're gonna end up sitting next to your partner as opposed to a table, so be prepared if that's you come here, because I thought there would be tables and it's just bar. Um, it shows who's eating, what seats are free, and it's really kind of amazing. Like the lady just pointed to the screen and told us you need to sit in number one and number two, which are free. There really are not very many options. You get the soup, or the soup, and an egg. <laughs> We've There's, chosen one of each. Yeah, we got the soup. The same, and then you can get extra meat, or an egg, or some things, but it's not like you can get a whole lot of different styles. Yep. So um, they do one thing, and that means it's probably pretty good. They're having us fill out a survey as to how we would like to have our ramen. This will not come as the chef recommends. It will come as the survey ist recommends. Um, I'm going like kind of far on the strong flavor and the thickness of the sauce and Eric's kind of keeping it in the middle. We're not being shy by any means. So we'll see where this gets us. I'm excited to see the difference between his and mine. I've never been in a place like this. I've sat at like a, a bar stool type place, but there's never been like little there's never been little there's never been little walls. Like we can you got a privacy wall so when you're slurping your noodles your neighbor can't like get the splashback effect, I guess. I don't I don't know what the deal is. I'll be putting that up. <laughs> and um, you know you get your cup and your water and your spoon. And she actually already delivered my egg. I got I got a how do you know it was a she? I never saw her. I know, yeah, you can't see the people serving you, but you can hear her voice. Yeah. I'm assuming she's a she, otherwise she's just 
you know, got the high voice, he has a high voice. It's a new world, I'm not going to argue. It's possible. <laughs> but the, the thing I noticed when we walked in, the smell is amazing. And our book actually mentions that, like, enjoy the smell when you go. And it's like, it's a sweet smell or something. Do you, you smell what I'm talking about? I'm sick. Oh, it's like a bakery or something. Yeah. It's yeah. like a bakery? Yeah, it is. It does not smell like ramen. Uh, your, your sniffer is busted? It smells like bread. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, I, uh, sweet. I was thinking like pastry or something like that. It yeah. does smell like bread. Yeah. Just yeast. Like total yeast. <laughs> Um, I find this fascinating, these little <laughs> booths. I've got my own little number. Um, I'm number one, by the way. Yeah, you jacked that. I did. And you've got your own water dispenser and everything, and you don't ever see this lady. I, it's exciting. I did not expect this. I expected a really cool meal, but I didn't expect a full-on experience of awkwardness. <laughs> it's a bit awkward. It's solitary. Very solitary, as long as we've got the door locked. Our food got delivered, the guy came over, he put down a tray that was on the other side of the counter and he delivered Eric's food and then he delivered my food and he said some stuff and I told him arigatou gozaimasu and then he bowed extremely deeply. Well, he had to so you could see the bow underneath like the little, little entrance. That's true. It had to be deep for us to be able to see that he was actually bowing. And then he put down our curtains. We have curtains. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I feel like it should just be complete, like, all by myself now. <laughs> Is it hot? <laughs> Is it hot? Yeah, I can't touch it. It's really <laughs> hot. So it came in this little box and uh, it is, I mean, it's stupid hot. And it's, it's called Kama Dare Tonkotsu, okay? And the Kama part means like iron skillet box or something like that. And that's, I guess, what it came in. I've never eaten ramen out of a box. So we're gonna open this up and we'll see what we got. It looks just like the picture. It does look just like the picture. So um, the sauce is a tonkotsu sauce. And that's like um, like, a, like a pork like thing going on, right? Like I got that yeah, right. it's you definitely think? pork. Thing. And do we not have a hashi? Oh. So, and uh, here we go. So yeah, the presentation is really good, and the sauce has got like an oily film on it. Look at this. Oh my goodness. There's like an oily film on top of this. That's kind of I did not expect that. That's kind of weird. So you kind of went middle of the road yeah, on everything. Yeah, because they had they gave us that survey, and I select. I just put like, like middle of the road, like the normal for almost everything. Normal spice level, normal broth, normal noodles, blah blah blah. Just you know, I'm not an expert. So I'm going to mix this up really quick and I'm going to give us an impression. The presentation of this is amazing. It's just as cool as the whole restaurant is. This was totally worth waiting in a line outside for. It was only, what, five minutes or ten minutes or something. Alright. <clears throat> That's amazing. It's a taste of ramen I've never had before. The broth tastes. It tastes different. It's very good. The spice is there. It doesn't like attack your whole mouth. Um, it's kind of like the top in the back of my mouth is a little bit burning, but not like burning. It's just like, you know, you feel the spice there. Um, it's a pretty rich flavor, and I can see like if you crank up the richness, it probably gets incredible, like thick. I can oh, totally I cranked see, it up. I can totally see that being, being a thing. Um, let me check, let me see how the noodles are. Noodle texture is important. And this type of ramen is known for thin noodles. Mm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's mm. nice. Yeah. So like Katie said, the noodles are really thin compared to um, what you would get from like a normal ramen. Like, and almost like somen. Like it's that it's that thin, but obviously not made of the same stuff, I guess. Yeah. That's all right. And um, I got a egg with mine as well, and it should be half boiled, I believe, and then I'm going to put it in, but I'm not going to like try to do an egg in front of a bunch of people because that's going to be a disaster and it's going to break and I'm going to look like an idiot. So instead of that, just believe me, there's an egg in that egg. And we're going to open Katie's, um, I was going to say open Katie's box and that felt wrong. We're going to open Katie's food and we're going to see if hers looks any different. How did you order yours differently? Um, my 
flavor is stronger. My richness is richer. <laughs> my onions are white. Oh yeah. My noodles are harder. <laughs> and my spice and garlic are the same. I roll hard with my noodles. <laughs> I roll hard. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So Where is seems... the chopsticks? Yeah, you don't have. Do you not have any? You're gonna have to ask. Here, you can just use mine. Okay. It's okay. We kiss sometimes, so it's legit. We're allowed to share utensils. Yeah, I have that same film. Yeah. Oh wow. And you can completely see that, like, there's a separation between the liquid and the tasty bit. <laughs> so definitely mix that up. I'm gonna taste yours and see if I can taste the difference. But I'm not gonna tell you anything about it. I'm just gonna taste it. <clears throat> yours is less spicy, right? No, I didn't change the spicy. Oh, so it's medium, okay. I didn't okay. have time. It was so confusing from the moment that I was filling out the survey to her telling us to go get to Ichiban and then so exciting. Yeah, okay, that's quite a mix. You really have to mix it quite well. Smells really good. It smells like Triscuits. <laughs> <laughs> Your associations are bizarre, man. Wow. Yeah, it's not a bust. This is good. Yeah, you're right about the spice being more towards the back of your mouth. And the noodles, they're thin, but they're... They have power. I don't mm. know how to explain that. How, how do noodles have power? Well, those are the strong noodles, aren't they? Is that what you said? Well, you're yes, hard with yes. your noodles. Mine, mine are extra firm. <laughs> um, so taste your broth and then taste my broth and tell me which one you like better. see the richness in yours yeah and yeah my flavor has more pack yes yours is better I agree you gotta roll you gotta roll hard with your noodles roll hard with your noodles <laughs> roll hard with your flavor take it easy on the garlic <laughs> <laughs> all right I'm hungry let's eat this food and somehow get chopsticks yeah I don't know how to like how do I notify someone <laughs> what do I do I totally didn't mention this. I was just so excited about having the ramen that I forgot to explain that this is like Fukuoka at its food. I don't know if it's the best because I haven't had lots of other Fukuoka food, but this is what people think of when they think of Fukuoka. Like if you talk to a Japanese person about Fukuoka, they will talk to you about Hakata ramen, and that's what this is. It's Hakata ramen. This is hakata a special is, kind in a box, though, right? Yes, it's, it's not a special always kind. In a box. This, this place is special for its box. <laughs> and Hakata is like the center of Fukuoka, the city of Fukuoka. Like, it's the big station there, so that's what it's named after. And it's mainly important because the noodles are thin and the tonkotsu uh, soup sauce inside is just stellar. It's, I assume, the best. And I would say this is some of the best that I had. And we've had tonkotsu ramen before in Kumamoto, and I didn't think it was that great, but this was stunning. And I also just wanted to say that I feel this is really inappropriate. I can't believe you picked that thing up. Is it not a million degrees anymore? Mm -mm. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm sick, and this makes me feel better. If you find yourself in need of a tissue, as I have a lot, they're just on the wall behind you. They plastered a tissue dispenser <laughs> into the wall. And toothpicks. Okay, now open your eyes and look to your right. <laughs> I had the same look on my face! 
<laughs> Dude, capybara are friendly. <laughs> okay, so that's what we're doing tomorrow. <laughs> well, we're just hanging out in front of the Starbucks here in the Zaifu. And it said it was going to take like 40 minutes to get to the Zaifu. It took us like two hours. We rode past our transfer spot and then we missed like one train by this much and we ended up waiting like 40 minutes here and 20 minutes there and so it took a while to get here but we're here and I've already had some snacks like some of the shops have uh, little open containers so that you can taste all the things that are in their shops and one of them's got corn nuts people corn nuts it's been a long time since I've said that phrase but they had the giant corn nuts and the small corn nuts and a whole bunch of other like peanuts and beans and weird stuff I think everything I put in my mouth there I didn't really know what was going on so so far I've been here in Dezaifu and I've put some nuts in <laughs> Oh my. Anyways, uh, we came here to see a big shrine and I'm already seeing like it's a pretty touristed town but they've got a good draw of interesting shops and we're gonna go and see what they have to offer. Also there's this weird Starbucks. I saw it in the magazine I was like oh that building looks awesome and then I came up and I was like Starbucks man. I'm a hater. <laughs> Your spirit animal? Kitten. Kitten? Kitten. This is a kitten. The kanji says kitten. So <laughs> they use the same word for giraffe and like this thing because in like Chinese history or something, maybe I've explained this before in a video. In Chinese history, like they had this mythical creature and it looked like this thing and like then some Chinese explorers went to Africa and brought back a, like a real giraffe and when the real giraffe got off the boat, <laughs> the emperor of China was like, Kitten, because he thought like, oh, it's one of those things. They're real, but like, I mean, a giraffe doesn't. I mean, like, the neck proportions are wrong, but I can see the long leg thing. Guys, don't touch his ball. It's his ball. But I think I found something very interesting. Oh, he's got another ball. So this is like a touristy area, yeah. But we walked out of this little like part of the temple area, and immediately we were in this little forest and there's no tourists. Well, I mean, there's two tourists, but there's no other tourists. And it's really peaceful and nice. And when I come to like temple areas or shrines or whatever, is this, I think this is a shrine. And when we come to these areas, the thing I like about them is they're peaceful. So when they're really touristy, that like, that peaceful part is gone, especially as a weekend. I mean, it's excusable that that's what the situation is, but like the part that I really like is that peacefulness. So it's cool to have found this. And I said earlier that it's not that hot here in Kyushu, but it is now quite warm. <laughs> Um, Keep that cardigan on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that look, cupcake. You gotta look good, you know. <laughs> and but when you walk, when you walk out of the area with the the shrine and into this forest, the temperature drops like ten degrees, like immediately, and it's like kind of it's still warm, but it's it's much more tolerable. It's pretty too. You guys seen the sword in the stone? It's like that great story about like that kid that was like miraculously able to get the sword out of the stone and nobody thought that he could do it. We've got a different kind of stone. And instead of a sword, for some reason there's a crutch in it. So I'm kind of getting the impression this is some sort of like Russian roulette of disability. I don't know. I think if you get it out, you're disabled, son. Yeah, and I feel like if you give it a tug, it comes out, you're just instantly going to need that for the rest of your life. But no, wait, seriously, what's happening here? Like, that's a crutch, that's a stone. It's not a real stone. Is it? Is it fake? It's fake. Yeah, it's definitely fake. Should I chance it? <laughs> nope. I'm not going to even try. That means you're a cripple in here. <laughs> you have no bravery. I've been watching a lot of Game of Thrones, okay? And they use the word cripple like it's nothing. All right, so I'm pretty sure it's nothing.
just found something interesting. We were walking and walking and walking up this hill just randomly. We found this hill and honestly I think we kind of just followed this other foreign guy up the hill, whatever. And we went further and further and further and then we finally found a cave at the top of a hill. the sake. Two types of salt, I assume. I'm not sure what's in that cup, but I don't want to get too close. Look at all the kitsune! <gasps> oh, more sake. This is awesome! I don't normally donate to temples or shrines because I don't understand them, but the wow factor on this cave was pretty good, so... I'll help the uh, kitsune live another day. A short stroll from the shrine and you find yourself at Dai Zaifu. Dai? No. Da Zaifu. Yeah. Da Zaifu Amusement Park for the kids. This is really kind of creepy. <laughs> it's just out of nowhere and like... I kind of feel like you send your kids in there and you don't come pick them back up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Whoever sumo wrestle for the win. Ume, plum, mochi. Squished up rice stuff. Mochi. And warm. That's really the only understanding I have of this little guy. We, we've watched them cook these, and things are shutting down now here in Dazaifu. So, um, they basically just take the pastry and they put the stuff inside and they put it in this automated machine and the machine just cooks it perfectly. And then I'm gonna eat it. Let's That's see what's the best that. I can do. I love ume. Ume is really sour though. A lot of people, like a lot of Americans have said to me they don't really enjoy the flavor, but I think it's great. I like that it's nice and browned on the bottom. Make sure I'm not going to eat any plastic. That's definitely mochi, isn't it? Nice and warm. Um, definitely mochi, but the way that it's been cooked has kind of made it so it's not as sticky. Mm. If there's any ume in here, is it it's really, really light, and it's more onko, like red beans. Ah, uh, so is there bean paste in there oh, as well? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, ooh, That's hot. basically, yeah, it's hot. It's actually hot. Mm. Yeah, okay, so it's just a bean paste treat. Mm. Definitely good. I thought it was just gonna be like ume inside, but. Oh, it's really hot. <laughs> mm. It's good, but yeah, I don't. I don't, I don't know where any. the ume is. If there's ume, you're right. If there's, I won't go on record saying there's no ume in here. True. I feel like there's like a slight ume to it, but yeah. I don't really know. Did you want more? Yeah. <laughs> the lady gave us some tea too. It was very nice of her. She didn't have to. Mmm, it's good. One of the places that I was kind of excited about going to was Ohori Koen because, and that's Ohori Park. And the reason that I was excited is because I looked on the map and I was trying to find the park and I was like, where's the park? Where's the park? And you're looking for this really big green space, but it's kind of a water park. Like, it's all water. And it was a huge blue part with this string of bridges that kind of go to one or more islands, I'm not sure. But it's, less land than it is water for a park and that's really interesting to me and gorgeous i am shocked i'm hoping that we can see a really good sunset here or at least just enjoy the nice surroundings this park has lived up to the cartoonish nature that was in the map <laughs> we found this wonderful little like not sandbar but like rock 
pass the Akbar <laughs> near the um, near the ocean. It's in the ocean, and you have to you have to jump across this water to get into it. And it's not a mighty leap. I just stepped over it, but I don't know the way Katie's looking at it. This might be video worthy. <laughs> so uh, this is Katie, and this is the little pass she's got to come across. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get her to go. All right, are you ready? Okay, all right. Ready? Go ahead when you're ready. Hey! It, you, I did need to leave. I, I can't walk over that, that's too big. It's filled with seaweed, wow. I've never seen that much seaweed. Have you seen this view? I've definitely seen that view. That's something. I am wishing that we could sit down. <laughs> it's really wet. Let's go over to that island. We have our own island now. This is amazing. I'm gonna put up a flag. <laughs> if you've watched our videos, especially recently, you probably learned that I really like little islands and like, like climbing on rocks and stuff. And like, that's my jig and I really enjoy that. So this is awesome. This little island is great. <laughs> So I circumvented the island and then I got back to where Katie was sitting, which took like, what, two minutes? It's not a very big island. And now it looks like the tide has come up, so we are now in a hurry. Ah! <laughs> this is about twice as wide as it was when we came back earlier, and this is wet. So I'm not sure how to run to jump across this with all my gear. So I think one of us needs to go first. You can take your shoes off and walk. Yeah, but I've got socks on. It's just going to be miserable. <laughs> I mean, you, can't, you want me to throw you across it? How am I going to get there? What are we going to do? Build a bridge, son? <laughs> um, you hold on to my bag. Yeah, so I'm if you gonna, fall I'm in. I'm going to put it here. I got it. You can toss me the bag once I get over yeah. there. But I'm, I, I'm more worried of you slipping and cracking your head open on these rocks, dude. I understand that feeling. Like, if you run on this you, and you try to push off, man, you're going to slip. It's, it's like ice. I think you should take your shoes off and walk. It is gonna be miserable, but it's gonna be better than having wet shoes or a broken head open. But we need to make this decision quick. Like, this water's getting deeper. We really gotta have the video going for that. I think this is a horrible idea. I'm going down on record. Hey, sure, you get a wet shoe out of it. It's not as wet as it would have been if my feet, if I had taken my shoes off and walked. Fair enough. Okay, I'm gonna throw you stuff, okay? Do you think you can catch this? Yeah. Throw it wide. Mm. Got it. All right, okay, I'm gonna throw you my bag. And then this camera. <laughs> Ready? Yep. Oh yeah. All right, camera. Now me? Shit, I've got my tablet in my pocket. Should've put it in the bag. I should have. Okay, camera. <laughs> Do I put it in my pocket and just hope I don't fall in? No, I think it's safer me. I'm gonna turn the camera off for the throw. Maybe my shoes are wetter than, or slipperier than yours? I don't know. Ah, uh, maybe I'll do this. Get walk. What about your, are you gonna take them off? Yeah, gross! There's so much seaweed and seashells in that water. What if we don't get a shower? You sleeping further away from me. It's gonna be super, super slippery. You haven't even thought about the temperature. I'll deal with the temperature, it's only one step. Actually, it's nice. What about that uh, seaweed? It's pretty gross, but I'm not soaking wet anymore. We didn't have to like, <laughs> we didn't have to like Indi Indiana Jones our stuff across the <laughs> across yeah, the, the ocean. <laughs> so, oh, anyway, so uh, my foot now is going to smell, and we've come to Fukuoka, and we don't have a hotel. <laughs> like we were just like, eh, hey, we'll figure it out when we get there. So. 
I, I don't know what's gonna happen. So maybe I, well, well, if I can't wash my foot, it's gonna be nasty, man. It's gonna be nasty. I need some water now. Dang it. Let's go. Now we're looking for a vending machine to buy water so I can wash my foot off. Um, if it was unclear where we were, I don't know if this was in the shop before, but this is the little the little rock bar that we walked out down, and then that was uh, that was Katie and Eric Island momentarily, and. We almost didn't need a hotel, because if we had waited any longer, we may have had to sleep out there. <laughs> Call Coast Guard or something. There was a really creepy cave-like situation over there that you could have curled up there, and bugs would have just enjoyed you, but <laughs> it was kind of creepy. You could totally curl up in there, and I'm sure some homeless people have. Yeah, if there were bugs, at least there was food. There's some vending machines down there, there's a vending machine here, there's a vending machine here, there's a vending machine there, next to another vending machine. Japan's amazing. <laughs> so I'm gonna get some water here, and uh, but oh. All right. So, uh, that's gonna be my foot bath, and it can't come too soon because the, 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 the what's it called, the surface? The surface of this is horrible to walk on without any shoes, and I look, I look insane right now in Japan, walking down the street with no shoes. <laughs> so, we're gonna get this remedied. <laughs> this is significantly colder than the ocean was. Uh, oh man, this is... Oh my god! It's ice cold. <laughs> Okay, so the thing that I've been the most excited about coming to Fukuoka about is I saw that they have street stalls called Yatai and in the street stalls they have like you sit at them with a whole bunch of people and they make the food in front of you and this is something that's like common in Asia but not common in Japan. I've never seen anything like this in Japan so I've been really stoked about it because usually it means like fun food and a cool atmosphere. So. Um, they're all in a neighborhood called in a neighborhood called Tenjin that's kind of in the central part of the city and it's a posh neighborhood which is a bit weird because I kind of expected it to be like gritty and like all these like things like jammed together like a market in like Thailand or something I don't know that's just what I painted in my head but instead it's like Fifth Avenue or something and then at nighttime they, they bring them put these sh these shops in it's, it's weird it's not exactly what I expected so there's actually a few different neighborhoods in Fukuoka that do this and this is the first one we've seen but maybe the other ones are a little more like gritty or something I, I have no idea but um, I saw on TV some people here a couple days ago actually and they were eating some pretty weird things so we're hoping to find some of those but in the meantime we have found the one shop and chosen the one shop that has no English on the menu because I don't know there's something that maybe that's a good thing <laughs> I don't know so he's given us a copy of his menu and um, we're gonna give it a go and see what happens the dude was really nice and he was like you have to wait a couple minutes so we're just we're waiting right now and then we're gonna go in there and get crammed in there and try not to be rude with the camera we're gonna see how this works out we have entered the world of yatai and we're at our first yatai and we have gotten three things and the first of which is cheese tama that's what he called it and it's a uh, yaki tamago which is like fried egg with uh, cheese inside and it looks like there's other onions and things like that it's basically like the world's best omelet and it should be a little sweet and we've also gotten a show you, show you yeah. a soy sauce, a sweet soy sauce on it. Um, I think Kyushu has its own kind of soy sauce, so that's probably the best choice we could have made. It's got a little salad, and it's also got some mayo. And do you, this was six fifty. I think so. Yeah. And we sat there thinking that maybe we shouldn't get it. It's kind of expensive. The weight of this <laughs> is shocking. Is it? Let's see. Oh yeah. It's really it's bizarrely heavy. Maybe it's a heavy plate. And I just realized that I'm starting to lose my voice. So, sorry if you don't hear me in the future. I'm busy eating and not being able to speak. <laughs> I'm breaking into it now. You can definitely see that the egg is not thoroughly cooked, but it's kind of juicy and you've got the cheese in there and definitely some onions. And I need to make a smaller piece for myself because that's just too big. 
There we go. Gotta get a little mayo in there. And just go for it. It's a bit soupy. You got a, you got a cheese thing going on here, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and more American omelet feeling than what we're used to with yakisamago. Yakisamago is sweet. This tastes like what I would kind of make at home. Way better than me, but it tastes like what you have in America. Ah, mochi mochi gyoza. <laughs> We heard that um, gyoza here is really great. Uh, this is not the kind of gyoza that I was expecting, but we knew that it was mochi mochi, so we were really excited to give it a try. And I'm gonna let Eric try this one, because I kind of want to save my voice a little bit. All right, so the mochi mochi gyoza, I'm gonna give this a go. Um, I'm assuming mochi mochi means there's mochi inside. <laughs> I guess. Mm. It's pretty hot because I mean it was cooked like five seconds ago. That's a really good thing about the yakai situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah this is. It's okay. I mean, it's not bad. It's just not exciting. There's a sauce over here with what seems to be maybe wasabi and some sort of sweet sauce. I, I don't know. I'm gonna just dip it in there and see if that it enhances it at all. Sorry, it's noisy in here. Well, in are we in? I don't know. Oh. Mm. With the sauce, it's good. I don't think it's wasabi, though. I've had that flavor before. It could be yuzu. It's yuzu. Yeah, yeah. I am it's good. Yeah, you're right. I think it is. is. Alright, switch with me, switch with me. Uh, <laughs> it's very exciting. <laughs> what have you got now? Uh, last thing that we ordered was um, yaki ramen. And it turns out that these stalls. Uh, Fukuoka is famous for ramen, and these guys want to serve that ramen and give it to the patrons, but bringing water here and getting water to these stalls that are just put up every night, they don't have like their own drain or sink or anything like that, so they don't want to drag all this water. They want to just make the flavor for you and provide it in a way that's edible. So what they've done is they've taken the noodles that we had earlier today, the Hakata ramen noodles, which are the thinner noodles, and they fried them kind of like yaki soba and instead of using yaki soba uh, flavoring they've used the Hakata ramen flavoring and it's also got some greenery in there some really nice vegetables and tons and tons of onions oh my goodness and an egg on top life is really really good right now I am excited about this this is probably one of the things that I was most excited about because I've had ramen and the ramen that we had earlier was exciting but this just a little bit different. <laughs> There's also meat. That's stellar. What is the meat? Is it is it is it from the sea? Pork. No, it's oh, not sweet. from the sea. It's tonkotsu. So. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. Um, so we definitely need to mix this up, get this egg in there, and get this food in our bellies. <laughs> this yaki ramen is reasonable. It's like amazingly good. Once you mix it all up and everything, this is like this is on point. <laughs> um, the mochi mochi gyoza is also really good once it's got the yuzu stuff in it. You agree? I would say I would I was actually a little shocked about it. Just there's so much mochi in there. Yeah, it's mochi mochi. I thought that it was just going to be a little bit thicker on the outside, but it's really like a lot. It's kind of I'm stunned by this. And the, um, the, the egg, the yaki tamago, tamago yaki. I mean, it's it's okay. I don't. I would try something different. I think, like that. but everything else is like amazing. Really, really good. We've got a couple of pictures hanging up here at this place, and um, it's like with famous people, and like people I've seen on TV, like food, not critics, but like people that go around and eat food and are famous for it. 
And um, there's also a picture of a dog who maybe is like the, the biggest cell phone provider in Japan's mascot, which is a pretty good, that's a pretty good recommendation if like Japan's most famous dog is eaten here. Like that is definitely a reason to come. What do you think you ordered? I hope you ordered the mochi mochi gyoza. Yeah, I could see that. It's white like you. <laughs> Sense. Yeah, it's, it's white like you. You ordered it. I did order it. It, it definitely blended in properly. It's getting kind of late, so um, we are heading across this little canal into an area that I believe is called Nakasu, and apparently it's a red light district, and we're hoping to find a place to stay. <laughs> so uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully we can find that, and we don't have to like you know get a third person involved. <laughs> Let's go. You're a freak. <laughs> We're looking for a love hotel now. So we found like the district. I, I, I Google searched love hotels and there's like a bazillion of them in this one little area. So we're walking around looking at their big signs that explain the prices and everything. And we came across this one and we don't have enough people to utilize this. But this is amazing. So this love hotel says there's a party room. <laughs> Since there is a huge bed, even five persons can use. This is in English, which is mind-blowing. And look at that bed. We're gonna need five persons. We only have two persons. We're in the right neighborhood to find more persons, so that's for certain. I wonder how much that costs. There's also a vending machine of some sort inside. I don't have any idea what that could, well, I mean, I have some guesses. I got a lot of guesses. Yeah, <laughs> I have some guesses. Yeah, and there's two tubs in there. Man, this room is amazing. <laughs> okay, so we're in we're in the love hotel room. How much was it? Six thousand yen or something? Yeah, six thousand yen, which is remarkably cheaper than we would have paid for any other place hotel. on the internet. Yeah. So, and technically, you can have this room from eleven p.m. Mm. until noon, which is that's I mean, well, that's all we need. <laughs> it's totally cool, and it's. A little room and it's totally fine and I expected to smoke cigarettes and stuff but it totally doesn't it's totally okay and um, the it's a little confusing like it's really busy in this neighborhood right now because it's a Saturday <laughs> and because everybody's trying to be getting their fuck on so like there's like the way these things work <laughs> I'm just gonna tell you what I think the way these things work is that there's a <laughs> Like a, like a vending machine like on the on the inside and like all the rooms are there and they light up and when you see one that you want you push the button and they have different prices based on like the different rooms or whatever some of them get pretty expensive like some of them I saw for like $200 um, but the one we were at the room we were at the most expensive one was like 70 bucks or something like that so um, we went to a few different ones and like the, the people who work here don't really think you can't see them typically like they set the window up so you can't see them, so they can't see you because it's supposed to be like kind of a private thing. So um, this one, we kind of stood there and the sign that was like, we're preparing a room was blinking and blinking and blinking. And then it would show that a room was available. And as soon as I would push the button, it, like be right before I pushed it, it would go away. I was like, what is this? So eventually the lady that was working in the office, like she was gonna take a break or something. And she came out of the office and I asked her, like, I was like, hey, is it okay if we wait? Like, is this okay? She's like, are you staying for the night? And I was like, yeah. And she's like, okay, hold on just a second. And then she went in there and she was like, okay, you can have a room, it's no problem. So here we are, we're in a room. But it was, I don't know why I couldn't just push the button. It was really bizarre. But maybe she only wants people that are staying. I don't know, I'm kind of tired right now. But anyway, okay, so the room. So like there's a television and the it's Catherine. really nice. Is it a really nice toilet? It's really nice. It is, that's a big room for the toilet, son. Yeah. Yeah, and then and we the, got. the bathroom, oh my gosh. Yeah, the bathroom is nice. Oh, hey. you know, from what I know, Japanese people really like, let's take a shower before we bang. So <laughs> Wait, why do you this, know that? This <laughs> basically shows me that how important that is. Like, that's a really nice bathroom. Dude, you gotta be, you gotta be clean. You I gotta can get be down clean. on that. So, like, it's important. Thank you, Japanese people. <laughs> I'm gonna enjoy that. <laughs> All right, so we've lived in Japan for a while, but this is actually the first time we've been into a Japanese love hotel. Um, we've used these in Korea in the past, and the system is completely different. They don't have like the 
they don't have like the screens and like the person hiding and all that stuff. It's it's different, um, more straightforward. <laughs> So we're learning <laughs> and what we've learned, and I suspected this because I've read about this on the internet before, but I didn't, didn't remember the, the, the vocabulary that explained how this functions in Japanese. So I was just like, mm, we'll figure it out. So when you buy the room from the lady or off the machine, if there's a vending machine, the door unlocks electronically. And once you're in the room, you can't open the door. <laughs> like it's locked and I will show you what it looks like. So this, this, I'm sorry, there's no light in here. I, I don't, there is a light, but I don't know how to turn it on. So anyway, so this is the door. Okay. And it, I don't know if you can see, but there's a plastic box. See this? And on the plastic box, it says like, if there's an emergency, break this box. But there's not an emergency. Katie just wants to go to the convenience store to get some snacks. So that's not an emergency. And the door handle is locked. So, you can call the lady. I looked in this. I looked in the in the in the instructions here, and um, I think I think I'm reading this right. And you can call the lady and be like, "Can I can I go out of my room, please?" And then she'll push the button and unlock it. And when you come back, you can be like, "Can I come in my room, please?" And she'll push the button and unlock it. But I mean, it's, it's kind of a headache, you know. I mean, it's not impossible, but I don't. Know, it feels like you're bothering her or something. But it's interesting that you're locked in here. Like <laughs> you you're in here for now, you know. And they serve food here. And I'm not 100% sure, but I think maybe the food gets delivered through this little hole. <laughs> so... <laughs> we kind of want to order something just so we can see. Yeah, but I don't, know, I don't know how to pay for it or anything. Like, do we pay for it when we check out? Do we pay for it when they slide it through the door? Like, I don't know, that sign up there above it just says something like, says take off your shoes. So, <laughs> so I don't think it has anything to do with delivery. If you can slide food in, I'll slide my shoe out. <laughs> that probably wasn't going to work as payment. Yeah, I but hate that shoe. The, the shower, I took a shower. It was actually quite nice. And it's, this is the cleanest hotel room I think I've been in in my entire life. It is sparkling clean. And um, they have shampoo and toothbrushes and the works. So for the price, I mean, you're locked in your little cage. But we, for the we, price, it's okay. We could have brought snacks with us totally. in before that, and I will remember that tomorrow. But yeah. I was, I just wanted to get this over with and have it solidified, and now it is so solidified that like <laughs> it is, it is my life for the next like eight hours. Yes, that's okay though. I'm really tired, so mm. I mean, if you really, you can get down on some tea. They give you tea. Uh, can, tea is free. And toothpaste, you can eat toothpaste. I've been advised against that. <laughs> Like my entire life until this <laughs> moment when you told me I can eat toothpaste. I'll eat your babies. Hey everyone, we have a Patreon page. We'd really like for you to check it out. It'll allow you to contribute to us and make these crazy adventures we've been going on continue and get even better. So we'd really love for you to follow the link and learn more about Patreon and us. Go for it. Let's adventure.